We stand with those that can and will. As we turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 40. And we know this story. And he, talking about little David, took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistines. We're hoping the Lord will fill us to hope that we not only know more when we leave here today, that we be more. That God will help us, and that's what we need to do, grow in the grace and knowledge of the good Lord. And ever want to see here today that little David, David in 1 Samuel 17 is a very familiar passage. So I won't have to read many of the verses, but just talk. But the Bible tells us that as the battle broke out, Jesse, David's father, took, brought his uh, three of his eight sons and they went to battle and to help with the fight. Now little David was too young to fight. You need to remember that. So he was anointed three times. The first time he was anointed at 15. And yet, he was too young to fight in the Israel army, so he was less than 20. The Bible says he was small and ruddy, uh, red-haired, pale-faced, a slender boy, working out in the fields, not at the buffet like, you know, we hang out. But he was a picture of that. Uh, David was not old enough to go to battle, but Jesse was too old, but... David, three sons, uh, brothers went on to the battle. In verse 16, it says, And the Philistine drew uh, every morning and evening presented himself 40 days. Now the battle has not yet started. They, they were squared off toe to toe, ready to fight. But the conflict has begun, but the battle has not yet begun. And in those days, it was a battle of the gods. A lot of times they would pick a champion and we would pick a champion and whoever won took it all because if your God was greater then you know they, that way there wouldn't be some uh, people wouldn't die, they'd have more slaves they'd have more uh, uh, men, they would spoil the people, the weapons and the conflict raged on for 40 days and the battle's not yet begun a little, it said Jesse said to David his son Take now for their brethren, the three brethren, the ephod, or parched corn, and ten loaves of bread, and run to the camp of your brother. So go check on your brothers in the battle. He was too young to fight. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of the thousand, and look how their brethren fare, and take their pledge. He said, look after them. Now, he said, take this bread and this cheese to your brother. My best combination of, of bread and cheese is what we had yesterday, pizza. David was, David was nothing more than a little pizza delivery boy. <coughs> Whatever you do, you need to be prepared for God to do something great in your life. You need to be prepared for that time when that divine opportunity comes. And Jesse went on. He uh, went on. <coughs> David here that Goliath in verse 23, mocking God. And he said he walked unto them, behold, to become the champion of the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the army of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words that David heard them. <coughs> he was mocking God. He said, you know, uh, what, who are you? What kind of God do you have? He said that, you know, he was cursing God and making fun of God. And all the men of Israel would see this man. And they would ever... Uh, he was telling David, he said, I want a man to come fight to me. He said, one on one, and whoever wins takes it all. Well, David, seeing this man mocking God in verse 26, he says, uh, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who that he defied the armies of the living God? He says one of the most important things in the Old Testament is they're not a cause why do we come to church? Why do we fight? Why do we pray? Why do we struggle? Because there's not a cause, a reason 
to win our youth, our, the souls from hell, is a thunder cause. You know everything he said, uh, David said, this man came out mocking God said, I want one of you to come fight with me, and the winner takes all. The mental picture here, given Goliath is nine foot, nine inches. It talks about here in verses 7 through 12, I won't read it, but he had a helmet of brass, weighing about 10 pounds. He had a coat of mail, 150 pounds. He had a leg guard, 20 pounds. A breastplate, probably 20 pounds. He had a spear, the tip weighed 30 pounds. The spear was the size of, of a weaver's beam, and that had to be 30 pounds to balance it out. Probably his spear was 12 foot long compared to a weaver's beam. And he, uh, he had a sword, we read later, he was about 30 pounds, <coughs> and a shield carried by another man in front of him. We see this picture of a giant, no, just picture that. Boy, wouldn't you like to have this man in a, with you when you had a pickup <coughs> basketball game? I mean, gold is only 10 foot tall. He could just done. But also let us picture little David here. Like I said, in verse beginning of the chapter, David's a little red-headed boy, ruddy, fair skin, probably small, wasn't yet 20. Now, average man in Israel, by history, the average man in history, uh, Israelite was between five foot two and five foot seven at this time. If you're that hot, you can say, well, I'm biblical hot. If you was in that stage, uh, five foot two to five foot seven, people say, how tall are you? Well, I'm biblical hot. And a woman would be a couple more inches smaller. So you don't have to say anything about your height other than your biblical height. He was small, but he would yet grow it. He was lean. He was 20. And we see this in a mental picture, and it aggravated the giant. The Bible says they sent this little ruddy boy out to fight him. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tear you apart limb by limb and feed you to the birds. He didn't even want to use a shield or a sword. And you notice that he never did draw it. He never, it was still in the sheath when David went to get him at the battle. I'm going to get ahead of myself. But he, did, he wasn't prepared to spear him or take the sword out. He was going to tear him apart. And in Andrew's Cotton Patch Translation Bible, he said, oh, I'm coming, big boy, and I'm going to cut your tail. He said, God sent me. He said, I come in the name of the Lord. He said, you come in the name of your gods as the Philistines, but I come in the name of the Lord. And he said that. He, Goliath said, uh, you come here and I'll rip you to pieces and feed you to the buzzards in verse 43 and 44. And David said, oh, I'm a coming. He said, you come in your own strength, but I come in the name of the Lord. You know what? They always set up camp near the water when as possible they got to have fresh water for drinking and eating and most of the time they always set up near a brook but you know they was on one side of the mountain the Philistines on the other the valley in between there was a brook they always did that to be close to a water supply David left Saul tent uh, <coughs> David said I'll fight him <coughs> and he uh, said that here that he left Saul uh, Tent, and he picked up five smooth stones on the way here to uh, prepare for battle. And I want to talk to you today. And so David would go to fight one man and uh, had his mind. So, but I want to ask you, why did David take five stones? A lot of people say, well, uh, in the Bible it says that uh, Goliath had four sons. You know, that is true. Uh, Second Samuel 21, it says, at the last three verses, it said, And there was yet the battle of Gath. There was a man of great stature and had on, uh, on every hand six fingers and on every toe, every foot, six toes and four and twenty in number. And he also was born to the giant. 
And there he defied Israel. Jonathan, the son of uh, Shimeon, the brother of David, slew him. He had 12 fingers and 12 toes. And the four was born of the giant in Gath that fell by the hand of David and by the hand of the servant. Now that where David and his servants ended all the giants. It was very common in that day to have giants, but David and his men killed all the giants. And uh, David, now people say, okay, David, just common sense. Like we say in our day, you fight one in the trailer park, you got to fight the whole trailer park, right? He said, you think he had to fight four sons. Well, I don't think that's the case because this was in 2 Samuel, and he said, who is this man? He did not know who Goliath was. So I used to think that he picked up four, five stones because Goliath and his four sons. But now, why did he pick up five stones? And these people here, we see David's resume. Uh, you know, a very short but very impressive in verse 34 through 37 of uh, 1 Samuel 17. Uh, Goliath, we see him, and we see the slump. He had the stones, the sling. And in Judges 20, 14, it's a very uh, important chapter. It said, among all the people, talking about the, the children of Benjamin, Benjamin means son of the right hand, said they were uh, out of the seven, uh, 26,000, uh, they was, all the people there, there were 700 chosen men left-handed. And uh, everyone was fleeing stones, stones at a higher breath and not miss. The, it was recorded in history that these men in battle could uh, hit a bird in flight. That they were as accurate as a musket or a uh, crossbow <coughs> as we have today with the scope on them. They could come within a hair breath of their mark. In, in history, they have signs of them penetrating helmets shields, and even armor. It was like a velocity of 22 bullets. So David was very uh, good at that, and they worked out that uh, all day long in the field, and David said that he brought, uh, they asked about his resume, and you know that he had that sling, he had five stones, and he talked about here, said, uh, telling them, we know that Goliath killed many people, and he was a champion, but David never been fought with a little redded man. In verse 34, he said, I killed a lion. So there was come a lion and a bear, and I took the lamb out of the flock. And David said unto Saul, the servant kept the father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, took the lamb out of the, uh, the flock. And I went after him and spoke to him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by the beard and smoked him and slew him. Talk about uh, a bear came after him. You know, up in the mountain, we used to, uh, uh, you ever heard that song that we used to, that uh, we sung up in the mountains quite a bit? No, it's not a biblical song, but the preacher and the bear, when we get together singing, we always sung that song. It's not a hymn, but it kind of fit here. It says here, and the preacher went to hunt, and it was on a Sunday morning, Although against his religion, he took his gun along. He shot himself some mighty fine quail and one old measly hare. But as he was turning home, he met the great big grizzly bear. And it went on that the preacher man found the tree, climbed up the tree, and this is the, his prayer. He said, Oh, Lord, you delivered Daniel, saved him from the lion's den. You also delivered Jonah from the belly of the whale and then. He said, uh, cast the Hebrew children from the fiery furnace. Uh, the good books do declare, but Lord, if you don't help me, just don't help that bear. <laughs> they haven't seen that one day. <laughs> but, you know, it says here that uh, he said he was coming with a stone, a sling. And the, the verse I want to uh, read in verse 49. This is where uh, building up to. And David put his hand into his bag, in his bag, and took hence a stone and slang it. Now, ain't that a country word? Uh, Bitterles and uh, slang. Now, that's a biblical word. And he slang it. He took hence a stone and slang it. 
Once you get to say that, amen. Wake up, sing it. <laughs> and spoke the Philistine in the forehead, and the stone sucked into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. He used to say, where was that giant's helmet? I thought, well, he didn't think David was a opponent worthy enough, but it said that that rock had penetrated that. It was open in his face. So after studying and studying more, I always heard that he picked up five stones because of the four sons. But then reading and studying, David didn't know that. That was recorded and was true in 2 Samuel, but David did not know that this giant had four sons. So why did he pick up five stones? I hope this application gets to your heart. You know what? Sometimes God, he said, God was coming, the Lord was coming with him. And the Lord walked with me and you. But guess what? We also walk with the Lord, don't we? And the Lord has never lost a, a battle. He's never messed up. He's not always perfect. He always gives victory. But me and you, not so. Sometimes we mess. Mess up. Sometimes we miss the mark, don't we? So David, I think, in his mind, just like any person, he was prepared. If he missed the mark the first time, he was ready to load up and hit again. What are you saying? Failure is not final. For a child of God, David knew that there was a possibility that victory would not come the first time. <laughs> Just because you miss the first time does not mean the fight is over. Failure is not final. And we all been there. We have missed the mark. We have failed. But that does not mean that it's over. It's not over till it's over. You can try one more time by God's grace. Five stones, a number of graves. He had a chance to five, fight again. There was a reason for this fight. He said, is there not a cause? Tell you what, somebody needs some giant fighters to understand that just because you may have failed the first time, you're not a failure. You need to keep a slaying. You need to keep a slaying if you messed up and you lie. In your job, in your marriage, in your health, sometimes you need, by God's grace and by God's strength, dig back down deep and keep us slain. I've had a country about to my heart as I can tell you. If you messed up in life, it's not over. Thank God for grace. That number five. Uh, if you missed the first mark, uh, you could fight the giant. If David would have missed, he would have just bobbed the weeds and went, got his mother off and kept the swing. Don't you think? Thank God that God's got us that. We are facing some giants today. Some people fight the giant in the bottle, some in the pill, some the scripture pill, some in a relationship. And the only thing standing in a lot of people's way is their pride. You know, if a person goes to rehab, it takes three times for them to beat that addiction minimum. But just because you missed the mark the first time does not mean you're a failure. Sometimes your marriage does not work out the first time, but some of the most religious and godly people serving a God dug down deep by grace and kept us laying. Sometimes there are problems in your marriage, your family, broken hearts, broken home. When things go bad, you're not a failure. By God's grace, you need to dig deep and keep us lightning. Don't give up. A marriage held together by duct tape and silence don't have to be that way. Go to God. Sometimes it don't work out, but sometimes you just got to dig deep and keep us lightning. Sometimes people are fighting cancer. And that's a long, hard back. It don't happen the first time. Just because... You didn't work the first time or the second time or the third time. You got to dig down by grace and dig down uh, and keep us laying. You got to ask God to help you. Just keep on slaying. Proverbs 24 16. Uh, it says here 
Says for the just man falls seven times and rise up, raises up again. That, don't, that never mentions sin. We all fall down, don't we? We all miss the mark. We all stumble. But get back up. Dig deep in that rock and keep the swinging. Just because you made a mistake in life, maybe you ask God for forgiveness, dig deep and keep the swinging. Now that's about as plain as I can say it. Uh, tell you what, you've got disappointments, distractions, you've got discouragement, somebody got defeated, but it's not over. You're still a child of God, you can have victory. Ask God to give you courage, confidence, and keep grabbing those stones in your relationship with your family, with your church, things you had in your you may have been addicted. You may have did something you're not proud of. Thank God for grace. Thank God you just dig a little deeper. Maybe you made a mistake. Dig deep by God's grace. That's number five in that bag of God's grace and keep it swinging. Don't end there. It's not over. Noah was mocked. He built that ark in the heat of the day. The sun on his neck. People mocked and made fun of him. Never was a rain. People didn't know what rain was. And all of a sudden the rain began to fall. One day the rain fell. And guess what? The fountain of the deep rose up. And guess what? Noah sailed away. He didn't. He, he just kept swinging, didn't he? Old Joseph, boy, he had a dream that he was going to be somebody. One of the most important people in the world. That's why he had that dream in Revelation chapter 12. He was going to be somebody. He had to go from a pit to the prison. Had a heartache in his family. His brothers let him down. But he ended up in a palace. The most powerful man in the world. In the pit, the palace, he just kept old slain. Didn't have a bad report. Old Moses, he was a basket case, you know that. <laughs> he uh, survived the genocide of the Hebrew babies. Was a personal failure. He killed a man. He had on the backside of the desert that burning bush that was not consumed. Told him, get another stone to keep on slain. Joshua and Caleb. They watched the whole family, the, all their peers, die. The long, longest funeral march in history. 40, 40 years of people died out in the desert, didn't have a home, and missing God's promises by their complaining. But they kept on. But one day they stepped in that promised land, didn't they? They kept on slaying. The Hebrew children, they said, either God will kill me or not, I'm going to serve him. They went into a fiery furnace where they met that fourth man. <laughs> in the fire. Where was he? He, he? he was in the fire to begin with, and I won't tell you what, he's still in the fire. They said, if he takes me or not, I'm going to serve him. They just kept it slain. Job, sitting in that pile of ashes, his wife, we talked bad about her, but she lost that family too. She lost her husband. He probably was a strong, proud man. He just cursed God, God let him die. Guess what? He said in him ashes. God restored everything double. He just kept slanging. 